My name is Irfan Osaker. I am a clinical anatomy research fellow here at the Seattle Science Foundation. And today I'll be talking about the intriguing, intriguing history of vertebral fusion anomalies. More specifically, we'll be talking about clipple file syndrome. So our learning objectives today, I've listed uh, on the board. So we're gonna talk about what is clipophile syndrome. We'll talk uh, briefly about the epidemiology and the etiology. We'll talk about the clinical presentation, a little bit on the background historical evidence of this uh, discovery. And also lastly, we'll talk about some new molecular studies that have been done on this. So what is clipophile syndrome? Basically, it is an uh, abnormal congenital fusion of any two of the seven cervical vertebra. Pictured here is a lateral radiograph of a posterior C2, C3 fusion as demonstrated by the white arrow. Um, a couple more pictures here on the left is a lateral CT image also demonstrating a C2, C3 fusion. The one on the right is actually very nice. It's a 3D reconstruction of a fusion seen in an infant. And um, so when we talk about the epidemiology, the true incidence is unknown. And the reason for that is because no one has ever studied a cross-section of healthy individuals with this. But nonetheless, it is estimated to occur in about one in 40,000 to 42,000 uh, newborns worldwide. In addition, females tend to be more affected by this than males. Uh, so the etiology, it's, uh, it's unknown as to what causes this. There's actually a lot of uh, debate over is this genetic, is it uh, environmental? Some believe that um, alcohol consumption might lead to this. And I'll talk more a little bit later on about some of the more molecular findings pertaining to this, but for now, uh, to talk about the embryology briefly, and it is believed that failure of normal segmentation of the cervical somites between the third and eighth weeks of fetal development lead to this abnormality. This was first discovered by uh, Francois Maurice Klippel and, And and Andre Fayot in 1912. Pictured here is Maurice Klippel, and we'll talk uh, a little bit later about uh, how they discovered this when a 46-year-old Taylor came into their hospital. Um, so, clipple file is actually detected throughout life, and a lot of times it's an incidental finding on radiographic imaging. Um, most patients present with what clipple and file described as their triad of a short neck, a low posterior hairline, and a decreased range of motion. Although now it is believed that the low posterior hairline is a finding that is only seen in very uh, severe involvement of the uh, malformation. And the decreasing range of motion actually is the most frequent clinical finding seen. Now, I mentioned earlier that uh, this is a fusion of the cervical vertebra, but sometimes you might have fusion of the thoracic or lumbar region, in which case uh, patients might present with scoliosis and or kyphosis. One of the most uh, difficult uh, aspects for a clinician about this syndrome is that it is often associated with other abnormalities and anomalies. And I've listed a couple here, and I've highlighted two, um, which I'll show a picture of. So on the left here is a picture, is a posterior picture of a patient with clipophile syndrome and also an anomaly of the uh, cipital cervical joint. And if you look closely, the inferior pole of the left, left scapula is slightly elevated, and this is due to something called the uh, sprangle deformity. It's an anomaly that is associated with uh, malposition and dysplasia of the scapula. And if you look closely at his uh, neck, he has a short, uh, his uh, webbed neck, short, short posterior hairline, also very indicative of clipophile. On the right, uh, this patient here, he's trying to oppose his fingers, but in doing so involuntarily, his left hand is doing the same thing. And this is called uh, synchinesia which can also be associated or found alongside clipophile. Um, so although uh, it is known the eponym clipophile, file, the finding was actually seen a long time ago and it has a very rich history. And I just wanna discuss a little bit of the historical perspective of this disease and the osteological pathway. So before Maurice Klipp, uh, Klippel and Andre Fowl made the discovery, this anomaly was described as early as the 16th century 
and fusion between the second and third cervical vertebra were found in the Egyptian mummy of about 500 BC. Some actually believe that the Egyptian pharaoh, uh, King Tut, also had a clipophile syndrome. This discovery was made by Richard Boyle, who studied the radiographic findings and found that he had um, curvature of the spine and fusion of the upper vertebra. Uh, additionally, in history, um, the well-preserved skeletal remains of the Cardinal Carlo uh, Carlo de Medici was studied by anthropologists and they found that he had actual numeral fusions, uh, numerous fusions in his spine. Uh, he had one block from C1 to C6 and another one from C6 to C7. On the right picture here is a Greek historian, uh, Herodotus. He wrote about the uh, ancient race of uh, acephala in Western uh, Libya, and he found that these patients had, or these people had, uh, their heads melted onto their shoulder, leading to the assumption that they had crippled file. So it wasn't until the arrival of a 46-year-old tailor by the name of L. Joseph, who came to their hospital in Tenen on December 13, 1911, and it, interestingly enough, he presented with uh, abdominal complaints and also recurrent pleural fusions. And um, when on uh, their initial observations, what Clipple and File discovered was that he had the absence of a neck and along with the lower hairline and his head was resting on his trunk. On physical exam, what they found was that uh, posteriorly he had a convex vertebral column with dorsal columnar scoliosis also, additionally, it was noted that some of the vertebra was fused. So typically at the time, pre-sacral, there are 12 vertebra. On him, they found that there was 12 well differentiated, meaning the other 12 might have been fused. Uh, on radiographic examination, this was uh, from their original paper, shows uh, L, uh, L. Joseph's uh, thoracic lumbar, and as you can see on the right, it's heavily fused on the top. And so although um, after, sorry, file after his, uh, two years after the discovery of uh, the clipophile syndrome and his thesis, he uh, talked more about some uh, different case reports where he looked upon the uh, anomalies associated with clipophile and he came up with a classification and it went beyond just cervical um, the cervical region. He came up with three types, type one being massive fusion of the cervical, type two being fusion of one or two uh, vertebrae, and type three is you have fusion in the thoracic lumbar in association with the first two types. Uh, after his, uh, after his uh, classification, a few more authors also had their own, but today we still use the original classification uh, presented by Clipple and File. So recent molecular studies have, uh, going back to the etiology, they found a couple of genes which are very interesting. The first is uh, the MEOX1 gene, which codes for a mesenchyme homeobox 1, and they are thinking that this can cause a recessive subtype of the syndrome. Uh, a few other genes, uh, the GDF6 gene, this is also not only found in the vertebra, but it's also found in the intervertebral disc the uh, GDF3 gene and the PAX1 mutation have all been implicated in the pathogenesis of clipophile. And uh, lastly, uh, a frame shift mutation in the protein coding gene, uh, Ripley2, was also found, and they think this is a new type of autosomal recessive clipophile syndrome. Uh, other investigators have considered that this could be some type of global fetal insult, um, and that could also explain the other associated anomalies. Uh, others have also considered that this is a consequence of vascular disruption. So it's still unclear as to what the exact etiology is, but with, with these new molecular studies, it's, um, it may lead to new advances for treatment and possible explanation of the other associated symptoms. And while I'm talking about treatment, uh, usually uh, the prognosis is good for clipophile. Uh, treatment is usually symptomatic treatment of their complaints. Uh, sometimes you can do surgery uh, if it becomes very severe. 
Often these patients might present with uh, neurological uh, complications, in which case you advise them to avoid uh, extraneous activities, anything that will uh, risk, uh, even minor activities such as contact sports can risk minor trauma leading to severe uh, consequences for the patient. So you just want to tell them to avoid that. Um, that's it. Uh, thank you so much for listening.